So let's move on to our, our last major topic and what's really um, new to consider in our patients, and that's treatment-free remissions in CML. And, and I, I want to just start by saying I, I'm this is not just giving patients a drug holiday. This isn't just saying, oh, you're going to um, vacation, you don't want to have this or that side effect, why don't you hold the drug for a little bit and then restart. Treatment-free remissions, as we're going to talk about, is really a very active part of a patient's uh, therapeutic course with CML. And so we're going to talk specifically about that. But uh, Jorge, let's start with how do we identify patients who may be eligible for treatment-free remissions, and which patients in your uh, um, uh, practice have actually asked you about and truly considered treatment-free remissions? Um, I, I think that the guidelines that we use today for considering treatment-free remission um, are kind of like doing it in, in general practice, are the ones that were established in the original studies that came from France and Australia, the, the, the STEAM and TWISTER studies respectively. Um, so those were patients that had uh, achieved and maintained a deep molecular response. In those studies, those laboratories have very deep PCR, and, and they went to, to undetectable with a five-log uh, 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 level of detection. We've extrapolated that to MR4.5. So um, a sustained MR4.5 for at least two years, that was the minimum that they required for those studies, with at least five assessments during those two years. That means you've been doing it every six months, as, as has been recommended, as we mentioned earlier. So, so those patients, um, and in those, well, those, those studies were done with the matinee, by the way, um, and uh, in those patients, they considered the treatment discontinuation. As important as to consider how, you know, who, who's, who's eligible is, you know, what do you do after that? They were monitored very, very closely. Um, every month, uh, actually, in some of these studies, they did it every month for the first uh, year, and then every two months, and then every three months. Um, and, and the other thing that's important in those studies is that those studies um, resume therapy as soon as the PCR became detectable. Um, but in terms of answering your question, uh, I think we, we can address the other issues later, but, but I think that today we need to consider it for patients who have a, that at least two years of a sustained uh, MR 4.5. Um, I address it to my patients. Everybody who, 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 um, who meets those criteria, um, I bring it up. Some patients bring it up themselves because they're, they're, you know, discuss it and, and they hear it and, and, and all of that. So of course, some of them bring it up when, when it's not, they not meet those criteria, so you need to educate them. And, but, but it's a good thing because then you can focus and say, you know, all right, let's, let's aim for that, you know, and, and explain what things can, can help them then from adherence to, to optimizing doses and, and all these kind of things. Um, curiously, uh, my, my, my batting average is pretty low in terms of treatment discontinuation. I, I've had a uh, few takers, relatively speaking. I mean, I have stopped therapy now. I have a series of almost 200 patients where I've stopped therapy. Uh, but still represents a very small percentage of my practice. But part of that is because, you know, we, we all did these, you know, when we started treating those patients that now are eligible, we were telling them, don't ever miss a dose. Um, and, and we told them that the treatment was forever. Uh, we didn't know about these things. Uh, now we do. So what I do now is when I start a patient on treatment, I tell them the treatment is forever. However, we are starting to understand that some patients may lead to treatment discontinuation, and this is what we need to, you know, if you get to this point, da, 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 because number one, it lets them know that that may be a possibility for them, and it actually probably helps them have the motivation for adherence and for, you know, aiming and, and the monitoring and, and all these things, because it looks like I may get to that yeah. if possible. I agree. I, I think it does make it part of the initial discussion with patients. The other thing you brought up was, you know, just how long you need to be in an MR 4.5. And as I'm going to have Mike talk about, a summary of all of these many, many studies now that have looked at thousands of patients where we've had treatment-free treatment discontinuations. In an effort to harmonize all of these studies into one recommendation, the NCCN recently said that patients need to be on enabled TKI for at least three years, and that last year be in a stable MR 4.5. Um, but it's to try to bring some uniformity to a recommendation based on studies that have all varied in, in how they've done it.